Almost all wagering situations are very straightforward. I'd say probably 75% or 80% of all wagering situations you'll encounter have really only one good option. There are some circumstances, however, in which it makes sense to play some mind games. Welcome to the fifth and final installment of my tutorial on Final Jeopardy wagering. We start out easy with a two-player game. Russ in the lead, 12,800. Katie in second, 9,200. Arlen, not in contention. Start with the number one. Katie doubles up. She'll have 18,400. So to cover this, Russ needs to wager 5,600. Now if Russ gets it wrong with that wager, he'll be left with 7,200. So to stay above that, Katie can wager at most 2,000. Now for rule number three. The difference between these two scores is 3,600. That's too much for Katie, too little for us. Neither player can do rule number three. So when you can't do rule number three, that's when poker comes into play. You'll see that if Katie wagers a maximum of 2,000, She'll have 11,200, so Russ might look at this and say, hey, I can wager up to 1,600 if I think she's going to do that. On the other hand, Katie might look at Russ and say, hey, if Russ thinks I'm going to go small, he might go small. So we'll have, at most, with a wager like that, 14,400. So that means if she thinks that's going to happen, she'll have to wager at least 5,200. In this case, both players went large. Most of my game theory videos are predicated on this very situation where neither player can take advantage of rule number three safely. Now we'll look at a scenario with three players. Susan's in the lead with 17,800, Alistair's in the second with 15,600, and Teresa in third with 6,000. Start with Alistair and Susan. Alistair doubles up. They have 31,200. So Susan will need to wager 13,400. Now if she gets it wrong, she's going to have 4,400. So to stay above her, Alistair can wager 11,200. And Teresa, 1,600. Now we look at second and third, Alistair and Teresa. Teresa doubles up, she'll have 12,000. So to stay above that, Alistair can wager up to 3,600. Now we move to rule number three. The difference between first and second, 2,200. That falls in line with what Alistair needs to wager to stay above Teresa. No one else here has a safe rule number three wager. Now how convincing is Alistair's need to wager no more than 3,600 so as not to fall below Teresa? Well, if Susan's pretty sure that he's going to do that, she can respond in kind. If he adds 3,600, which is his maximum, he'll have 19,200. So to stay above that, or to get above that, Susan can wager 1400 Interesting, huh? She'll want to cap that at 2200 so as not to fall below Alistair should he wager zero. And then if Alistair wants to counter and risk falling below Teresa, if he thinks Susan might do that, she'll have 20000 so he'll want to wager 4400 at least. And we're kind of running out of room. Now this is a situation called Shore's Conjecture, after a player named Bob Shore who proposed this a long time ago. And it very rarely happens that the first place player will wager smartly like this. And sometimes it's a dumb wager because, who knows, second place will go big. But it exists. And in this case, 
Susan wagered 5,000, which doesn't really make sense at all, but Alistair wagered zero. If Susan had just wagered 1,400, she would have won no matter what. Here we have the awesomely named Faith Love with 10,400 in the lead. Ian, second place, 9,800. Celeste, trailing with 4,600. Start first and second. Ian doubles up, he's gonna have 19,600. So Faith will want to wager 9,200 to top that. If she gets it wrong, she'll be left with 1,200. So to stay above that, Ian can wager up to 8,600, and Celeste can wager up to 3,400. Now for second and third. Celeste doubles up, she's gonna have 9,200. So to stay above that, Ian can wager at most 600. That becomes his new maximum wager. Now for rule number three, look at the difference between first and second, 600. Interesting. Has to wager at least 600, but no more than 600. Therefore, 600. Now, what does this mean for our other players? Rule number four, Let's take a look at the other options. Faith says, hey, Ian has to wager 600, I think, anyway. If he's right, he'll have 10,400. That's what I have right now. Do I wager zero? Maybe. Or 9,200. Depends on what she thinks he's going to do. Celeste, on the other hand, looks says, well, he might wager 600. If he gets it wrong, I'll be left with 9,200. That's exactly double my total, so I have to consider doing that. It's an interesting case when the secondary wager provides the better chance of winning. And in this case, it played out exactly as we thought. Faith wagered zero, got it wrong, and ended up winning because Ian got it wrong too with his $600 wager. But had he got it right, she would have come back the next day as a co-champion. Celeste also wagered everything, got it wrong. Tough luck. Great playing by all three. Well, it took a while, but we got there. Mind games are in effect. What is your opponent going to do? Well, what does he think you're going to do? Well, what does he think I think I'm... I, it just gets out of control. But it's good to know that you have options sometimes. What you do is your decision. And I don't envy you in a lot of cases. But best of luck with that. And continue to join me here on The Final Wager.